A few years ago, we machined this 4140 stripper plate for our Whitney hydraulic punch press, and it worked great. But unfortunately, it started to bend a little bit. So let's make another one. Welcome to the 42nd Wednesday widget, folks. We made this because the factory stripper that came with it has these two uh, legs spread wide apart, and if you have a narrower, thinner part in there, it's just gonna bend it up when it tries to pull the punch uh, out of the part, and that's no good. So again, we made this little guy, and it was great. Um, worked great, except again, it's a little bit too thin, and that's because the material I had on hand at the time was only so wide. So if you're interested in seeing the original video on how we made this, you can check it out uh, right here. There's a little snippet and a link to it. But this is gonna be fun. I think we've learned a lot uh, in terms of how to run machines better. And we're gonna do this in HSM Works or HSM Express for the cam. So let's take a look at that and then let's head over to the Tormach and make some chips. Here is the part in SolidWorks. If we just walk through how it's constructed, we start off with a 2D sketch like so. And here we're increasing that width to 1.875. That'll give us a lot more meat around the side, which hopefully will increase the strength of the part. I would also like to heat treat this part, and I'd like to do it in-house. I was hoping our old heat treat oven would work. It's 30, 40 years old, not gonna work, so I'm chewing on whether or not uh, to buy one. I would love to, I think it would be a lot of fun. And there's this book by uh, Will, uh, William Bryson that I really enjoyed, and it makes you really excited about trying it. Um, but you know, they're not cheap. It's you know over $1,000 to get one with a good temp controller. Yes, I know you can build your own. I've been thinking about that as well, but um, I think it would be a lot of fun to see. One of the questions is going to be, you know, what does heat treating do and not do? And what I need here is, is resistance to flexing in addition to just general hardness uh, of the material. But I think this lasted for quite a while. So I think increasing, uh, you know, doubling or more the width of this uh, sides here should actually serve us well, at least for, for now. So going back to the part, we had those little sides, side walls and the holes in it mirror that a quick fillet in the corners right there. And then this last sketch, which should be two inches by 3.1, that actually represents our raw material and we'll use that in HSM. So speaking of which, click on Cam Manager and you see we've got two different jobs set up and that relates back to how are we going to cut this. The piece of raw material I've got is only 0.75 inches tall. So I can't do what I like to do, which is the easy way out, which is to say if this were an inch long, I would have a quarter inch of extra material. I could hold that in the vise jaws, and when I'm done, flip it over and just machine the rest of that off. That's the easy way. Don't have that luxury today. So here's the plan. Uh, we'll go through each operation in detail so that folks that want to learn HSM can see this. On a related note, I have been playing around with Fusion 360, folks. I'm going to have a whole video out on it, but that is going to be awesome. If anything, I don't like the CAD that much in it, but the CAM is HSM. It's identical, the menus, functionality, and it's very powerful, very affordable. So hopefully this will be a great tutorial for that as well. But we're going to do a 2D adaptive clearing to get rid of all this top layer, and then we'll be able, to, and we'll do um, the um, center drill as well in the holes on the side. Then what we can do is use a bolt and a washer and clamp this down and in the second operation, machine the whole outside profile. So, 2D Adaptive. One of the things I like about HSM is with the tool library, I've got a steel library and an aluminum library, and I've got these files put synced with SugarSync, kind of like a Dropbox, which means no matter what computer I'm using the software on, it has my tool library up to date. Very, very helpful for me. Quarter inch, four flute, end mill, we're gonna use the speeds and fees that we talked about in the 4140 uh, video we did on the Tormach, which you can see a link to here, and hopefully get some pretty good chip removal rates. So what we're doing is we're selecting face one and face two, which are, is these two faces, and then to create the geometry we want, you do two things. You uncheck machine cavities, and then you add this material that we've created here, the four lines, to tell it what to do. So if we take a look at that, and we do a stock simulation, you can see that looks like our stock, which is good, and it's gonna go ahead and machine away exactly what we want. The toolpath looks good. I, I'm, I need to do a little bit more homework and figure out if it's 
scientifically that good. It's it's um, seems quite intelligent looking. Um, I wanted to actually simulate that whole job. Speed this up. Okay, goes really fast, but you can see now we've got cleared out the hole and we've drilled our four holes there. So now we're ready to machine the rest of the material around the part. We do that in a second job, 2D adaptive. This time we just have to select that outside profile. We'll set our um, stock top and model bottom as our height range and you can see that's sandwiched like so. Although actually now that I think about it we can change the top to selection and pick that because we've machined everything above that plane and I uh, actually I realized I forgot to adjust these feeds so, um, let's pick our lab tool again to make sure we got the most up-to-date recipe there we go and a 0.15 step over we'll change that to half thou and we'll do ahead and do a smoothing operation that should be good okay and if we stock simulate that It's not showing, uh, I gotta figure out how to make it show the stock that's already been removed up to in prior ops. Like so. Now, uh, you saw what it did there, that was kind of a funny leftover, so let's do this. Let's leave, let's leave 10 thou, none of the bottom, but 10 thou. And then we'll come in and we'll do a 2D contour. Choose a tool 30, steel 30. Now there's a little glitch in HSM, which I think they know about, which is you have to reverse the tool path to make it climb mill like we want it to. And that's all fine. I think actually we should get a good tool path like so. Yep, perfect. Let's head over to the machine. <laughs> this is one reason why I'm really excited to have Cam integrated with SOLIDWORKS and CAD. I, I just realized, I thought this part was 0.75 inches tall, it's actually 0.67, so really easy. In SOLIDWORKS, all I had to do was go and edit this boss to be 0.41 inches high, and that updates the overall height to, actually I think we're doing 0.66. And then all my CAM stays the same, which is great, all we want to do now is machine the top of this down. We're going to use the Superfly. I used to do that stuff by hand for no good reason, but now I actually like this facing operation in HSM. And let's just walk through with the Superfly at the steel insert, 1200 RPMs, seven inches a minute. It'll be, um, let's see, for our heights, we will select the bottom will be the top of the CAD model, and we're going to machine up uh, 90 thou above that in two depths of passes that you can see done right here and that's that's all she is and look at that we get the longer ramp in ramp out so we're not plunging in and then we go right back into the rest of the CAD as we already are in cam as we already talked about it now let's head over to the machine all right here we go super fly 1200 rpms tw uh, 10 or so inches a minute 45 thou depth of cut. Pretty nice chip, right? Pretty nice cut. They're actually coming off blue, which is awesome. I'll see if we can uh, dig one out here later. And it leaves an incredible service man. Sorry, I should be more excited. I love this tool. I, I loved it in aluminum. I bought a second one for just steel because it's not only a great finishing end mill, it's a great uh, servicing end mill. It just is, or, or roughing end mill. For Tormox, to have the single insert and drive all that horsepower into it, it's been a real winner. And I like in HSM programming the face off. It takes the user element out of it. And if I've got to face off more material than this, I don't necessarily have to babysit it because, again, it's obviously doing this thing in G code. And it's pretty cool to see all the heat. I mean, these chips are bright, uh, deep, deep, deep blue. Um, and that's good. You're putting the heat into the chip, which means the heat's not in the work. It actually improves cutter life, includes cut quality just a win all around. Now we're going to switch in a second to tool 30. This is our Lakeshore carbide quarter inch end mill. Actually, let's take a look. I'll lay some of those chips on the, uh... isn't that beautiful folks? Isn't that an awesome chip? 
See that? It's actually a really pretty color blue, I think. <laughs> Listen to that, folks. Isn't that incredible? I'm going to move the camera and see. You can see that chip stream coming off. Well, we have some new blooper reel footage. Uh, sorry about that, folks. Um, that's my fault. Uh, I had a Tormach uh, collet out of adjustment. You guys know there's no problem with tool pull out. We did the video where we ran higher removal rates than even this, but uh, my goof. But you can see, awesome cut. I love this recipe. Great chip coming off of it. Like that Superfly chip, it's a real chip. It's, it's blue. It's got some heat in it. That's really important. It sounds good, other than the um, chatter that you'll get to hear in the blooper reel that I'll put out, which will show the footage where I just goof. Um, you're not hearing any chatter. It just sounds right, which is fun. It's exciting. I actually really like this tool path, and I love the chip stream. Can you see that coming off there? You know, I have a polarizing filter, but I still got to work on the glare. I get a little bit of glare on machine faces that I don't like, but uh, I'm learning. Now I did change one thing. We're gonna switch, it's gonna be a lot faster, and we're gonna go ahead and, we're gonna go ahead and use a half inch twist drill to machine out that uh, center area, which is gonna prevent us from having to helical interpolate in, which is a great way to do it, but I would rather do the tool change, and it's gonna be a lot faster machine time Pretty impressive feed rate. You can see the chips coming out of there. And now that I look at it, I think, I think, but I don't know that our goo earlier with the tool pull out is going to compromise the part a little. I'm going to go ahead and finish it because let's just see what happens. And if we have to make another one, so be it. Um, but, you know, my fault. I do love this though. Look at that. Two passes, and you get that, uh, you know, I think it's a little bigger than an inch pocket. I uh, love it. And last but not least, at least before we move it to the fixture, we are going to run this at 2,000 RPMs in about... Uh, 50, or five inches a minute with a full retract. Just want to keep sure, make sure we get the chips out of there. This is a number 31 drill, which probably won't be enough clearance for those uh, dowel pins. So we, I probably ream it. Uh, sometimes I ream it uh, afterward. Probably actually should ream it in the Tormach, but uh, we'll be okay. Okay, so we've got our part. How do we machine the outside? We use the same fixture plate, this sacrificial type of thing that we had actually in the Glock uh, slide pusher video. Set our part on here. Now, if you really wanted this to be uh, accurate, you could machine this flat in place in the vise, and that would be a, you know, be a piece of good measure, but not necessary here. Get our half 13 bolt close, and then I have this recess below the jaw. Use a parallel that puts it about center and try to get it centered in the hole with the washers like so and you know you got to be real careful because anytime you're using one fixture pointer clamp you really run the risk of ruining the workpiece or the part or you know just not a good result i'm comfortable with this and we'll adjust the cut accordingly to make sure it looks good now to find the xy zero actually easy to do it really accurately. Put in our Heimer and I kept the XYZ zero right smack dab in the middle. So how do we do that? We've got machine surfaces here and here and here and here. So go to the left side, hit X zero, scroll up. Don't move your Y because you want to make sure you go in the exact same point.
and then just hit divide by two. And now we are exactly in the center and we'll just do the same for the Y. Here we go. Basically the same recipe. I, I reduced the width of cut from 150, 150 thou down to 100 thou just to make sure we take it easy and don't rock the part in the fixture. But I've done a fair amount of this and I, um, if I've ever had a fixture move on me, it was always my fault with having, you know, residual oil on there or a chip or something not tightened down. If you check it out like this, uh, I found it's pretty, pretty uh, reliable. And God, I love that chip stream. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Um, I love when we figure out good things. And it's been really fun to hear from folks who have said, man, I didn't realize uh, I could push the tool that hard, especially with the Tormach when you know, look, people don't know how hard can I push it and get good results and accept the results and good tool life. And we're improving tool life by taking a full uh, width of, or full depth of cut pass here, which is great. And I really want to thank Carl at Lakeshore Carbide. He has helped uh, come up with some of these recipes and he's been, uh, been willing to talk and discuss it. And, and that's not just because I've been using his tools and, and talking about it on YouTube. There are so many um, of the folks I've gotten to know uh, that I've heard good things about Carl, both folks that have heard about Lakeshore because of our channel, but also folks that have already been using them. So really appreciate that. It's fun to make a nice chip, isn't it folks? So enjoy, ooh, that just nicked the top of that bolt and I thought I'd measured and had enough clearance. Um, that is weird, huh? Yeah, it's, it's actually just nicking the um, grade five marks. That's my fault. I should have had a little more clearance there. Anyways, um, I don't even think it would, I, don't, I doubt it hurt the tooling, although wrapping through a part like that's not good. So here we're coming through with that 2D contour cleanup pass. You can see no problems at all being held down at all. I shouldn't have had those little flaps there. I didn't realize uh, my fault that I didn't go a couple thousand further on the 2D adaptive clearing. Um, didn't hurt the surface finish at all. In fact, that's that's a spectacular surface finish, folks. Look at that. Well, that's awesome. Let's uh, pull it out here. There are some sharp edges on this part, so I do have to be careful. It's one thing, a project I got to work on is, uh, you know, this, a lot of the guys like Brad at Over Tactical Keychains have really nailed down ways of tumbling parts, deburring, and polishing. I got to work on that. Um, just a slight amount of stuff left over here, but folks, that is spec. Look at that finish. Isn't that awesome? Just perfect. That's great. Awesome. Check it out, folks. There she is, our new Whitney Punch Stripper. Should work great. I think that extra thickness is going to help. So the question is going to be, would heat treating make it even better? I don't really know the answer to that. Maybe you guys can help me out in the comments below. Uh, I still think I'd like to buy a heat treat oven. I just got to figure out how to justify it. It'd be a lot of fun to experiment with. We've got an episode coming up where we want to cut some our own tools. Again, may not have to heat treat them, bud, but it could be fun. I also wanted to mention that Tormach is having an open house in Wisconsin August 1st. I'm going to be there. I think Grimsmo is going to be there too. So if you guys want to hang out with us, see Tormach, learn more. Uh, I was just up there for the lathe workshop. They have a first class facility. They put on a great event. Should be a good time. So if you are interested, stay tuned. More info from Tormach on that. Otherwise, folks, hope you enjoyed today's Wednesday widget. Take care. See you soon.